Hi everyone! Today on my bench I have this Network Sound Mamba XDB patch panel and splitter. Something is wrong with it, let's have a look. So, this patch panel has 16 inputs, combo connectors, XLR and TRS, divided into two sections, 8 inputs each, and on the back we have 4 DB25 connectors. Split 1 and 2 for the first half, and the same for the second half. These connectors have so-called Tascam pinout, 8 uh, balanced channels per connector, 3 pins per channel, balanced pair and ground. This is a completely passive box, what can possibly go wrong? Let me show you. So, I connected the first section to the first 8 channels of the mixer, and I set the gain in all the preamps to 45 dB, and most importantly enabled phantom power. And look at this, a random crackling, more or less in every channel, but most pronounced in channel 7. And now let me mute the mixer and disconnect the cable. And unmute. And of course everything is silent now. Let's try to reproduce the problem in lab conditions. Here we have DB25 connector, channel 7 is here, ground and differential pair. Audio signal goes across the differential pair, but uh, phantom power rides on both lines of the differential pair with respect to ground. As you can see, the positive is connected to both lines through 6.8K resistors which is a typical setup for phantom power. This power supply will provide 48 volts, and uh, the scope is measuring across the differential pair here in the XLR connector. This clip is grounded, but uh, everything else is floating, so it shouldn't matter. So, let's connect, and enable power supply, and run the scope. So, we should see nothing at all across the differential pair, but look at this. Perhaps we can try single capture that. Oh, there you go, one more time. We have one volt per division here, so this spike is about three volts. It occurred to me to measure resistance. Look at this. This is ground and this is one of the lines. 1.8 meg or so. Another line. 0.9 meg. Another channel. 1.3 or so. 1.2. This is ridiculous. 1.3 1.6 This thing seems to have poor insulation, so that 48 volts is enough to break through. 1.7 2.3 Unbelievable! Here we are under the cover. Looks fine so far. Let's remove one of the sections. I started to unscrew connectors, and look at this. They used machine screws into plastic. Must be very easy to strip the threads. I started unscrewing the second connector, and this screw came out with plastic threads. And look at this one. It's already stripped. Here is the bottom of the board, and I can see some flux residue. Maybe this flux is conductive? 
I removed the other section, not the one I showed before, so let's make sure we see the same problem. This is ground, and these are differential pairs. 1.2 meg, 1 1.6, 1.8, 2.4, yes, we see exactly the same problem here. I cleaned the board thoroughly, first with laundry detergent and then with isopropyl alcohol, and it did not solve the problem. And I was wrong before, this is not ground, this point is not connected anywhere. And now we have higher resistance from it to differential pairs, about 80 or 90 meg. And this is ground. So we still have about a meg or so. 3.6 here. 2.3. 1.6. So still the same problem. Maybe improved a little, but not very much. I desoldered both DB25 connectors and one input connector. So now this channel has PCB traces only. And look at this. I'm going to use this ground so I don't touch anything. And this is one line of the differential pair. And this is the other one. How is this possible? Did they use a conductive flux or something? And why is it so hard to clean? Do you have a theory? The comment section is waiting for you. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. PCB seems to be conductive somehow. Perhaps something went wrong during manufacturing process. So I'm inclined to get rid of PCB altogether and connect everything with cable. I have 50 meters of Mogami cable made in Japan. This is a thin cable with two conductors and a shield. Type 2944. Exactly what we want for this application. Let's go. I have some self-tapping screws to replace the original machine screws. Let's measure the original ones. About 2.8 millimeters. And self-tappers are slightly larger, about 2.9. And they still go through these holes just fine. So they should cut into plastic perfectly. Here is the result. I ended up using different DB25 connectors. I tried using the original ones, but it is so inconvenient and unreliable to solder to these thin and angled pins. And there is not much room below the connectors, so I used ones with straight pins made for soldering wires, not for PCB. And there was no such problem with XLR connectors. Of course it would be nice to use something like this with pins for soldering wires, not for PCB mounting. But pins here are not so close together as on DB25 connector. And also, some pins need to be linked together to combine XLR and TRS. 
and I've done that using a thin wire like this a few turns around one pin then around to the other pin a few turns around that one and that provides better soldering points for wires so now we have unmeasurable resistance between unconnected pins of course let's check randomly let's say this connector ground one line nothing the other line nothing between the lines nothing but look at this i have one more splitter box and let's check a random connector here ground on one line about a meg the other line 2.4 between the lines 5 meg some other connector in this section ground one line meg 0.2 or so another line 0.7 meg between the lines 2.9 or 3 meg and look at this I have this panel this is not a splitter but 32 channel output box and look at this again random connectors let's say this one ground and one line ground on the other line and even between unrelated connectors and in this section and in this section how is this possible? I am looking into this for my musician friends they need these panels alternatives are larger, heavier and more expensive so we are inclined to keep these ones fix them I'm still hesitating which way to go I wanted to try this way and now I know it's doable but it's a lot of work and takes replacing DB25 connectors perhaps it's better to make uh, replacement PCBs instead what do you think? let me know in the comments below thanks for watching bye